idea that that uh, we're sitting on comfy chairs fluffy comfy chairs and um, how we have uh, been meeting in a in a in a barn we've been meeting and I, I hate to give us all like accolades for that you know like Jesus died on a cross and we're like we don't get points for sitting in the sun like Jesus died on the cross I mean it's cool like but uh I think it's it's God just kind of working things out. And we have these comfy chairs and we have air conditioning. And I think it's really cool. And Trev continues to remind us as our pastor, you know, he's reminding us, like, hey, don't get too comfortable. And again, Jesus died on a cross. And we get one week off with AC and fluffy chairs. Um, but we've had so many, uh, so many blessings. That's why that, that song, and that he's done great things. We look back and see all the great things that, that God has done. And, and we've seen sunrise after sunrise after sunrise. And we've seen his provision after provision. We've seen salvation and baptism after baptism after baptism. And despite our circumstances, despite our culture, despite what the world says about the church, the world hates the church right now. The world hates it. Um, the world doesn't know we win. The world doesn't know we win. That, that God does great things. He's the author of great things. He's the author of good things. The world doesn't know that. They don't know we have a God that wins. That fights our battles for us. They don't know that, that, uh, that we don't fight with weapons. God fights our battles for us. They don't know that yet. 
So they're standing in a place of victory, standing on a podium, receiving their reward. And they're receiving what they get right now. And Trev's going to talk about that this, this morning. They're receiving their reward. But they don't know the battle's already been fought. And the battle's already been won. And we're on his side. And, uh, and he's fighting for us. He's done great things in the past. He'll do great things in the future. And it's all based on what Jesus has done, right? It's all based on what Jesus has done. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth. He holds the mysteries. Heaven and earth, he holds all the power. We worship Jesus this morning. And he could use some other method. He could cause the rocks to cry out. He could raise up descendants of Abraham from the stones. But he's called us as his people to proclaim his name. And so we're doing that this morning. You are the source. Life, I can't be left behind. No one else will do. I will take hold of you. It's like to Jesus to come to my rescue. Tell me where else can I go?
don't even want to look anywhere else. You've done great things. You've parted Red Seas. You split the Jordan. You caused water to flow from a stone. And then, and then on top of all that, you've taken a heart of stone inside of each one of us and made it a heart of flesh somehow. Because you are great. You've done great things. Lord, there's a, there's a community and there's a culture out there that is dying on the vine. They're dying because they don't have your truth. They're dying because they don't have the good news of forgiveness, the good news of grace and mercy. They have hate. They have frustration. They have self. At the end of all things, they have self and emptiness. And you've called us, Lord. You've called us to speak the truth. You've called us into the public square. You've called us. By your example, Jesus, you've lived it. And you're not asking us to do anything that you haven't lived. So God, put us in places to proclaim your word. Put us in places to show our desperation for Jesus, our Messiah. Put us in places that we might proclaim the name of Christ. That we might insert the gospel into all situations. God, put us in those places, in those conversations. God, make your name great, God, and use your church. Make your name great, use each one of us. God, don't let the rocks cry out for us. God, we worship you this morning. We praise your name as the author of all things, the ultimate authority in all things, the creator, God, the healer, the provider, God. We proclaim your name. The redeemer, yes, and amen. The author of our salvation, yes, Lord. to my rescue tell me where else can I go there's no other name by which I am saved capture me with grace I will follow you amen give him praise this morning Take a moment and greet somebody around you if you would. real quick before Pastor Trev comes up. Uh, first of all, um, if you uh, if you are interested in giving, we have our giving envelopes and our safe back there. So um, we have uh, envelopes for uh, missions and for, uh, for giving as well, general giving as well. Um, and the second thing is... Uh, that's my bad. Oh, that's you? Okay. I'm going to have to turn that down. So that's Trev's fault. <laughs> um, I'll turn you down. Hot mic. So um, uh, anyway, uh, for those of you that, uh, that have little kids, uh, K through five, uh, we've got some really cool stuff planned uh, this summer. Uh, there is um, a link on uh, the YouVersion Bible app, uh, a link to the calendar, so you can see all of the events. Also, uh, there's a link to all of the youth events uh, going on this summer as well. So, um, so if you're interested in that, uh, please check that out. Uh, so other than that, I'll turn your mic down and 
Pastor Trevor. Thank you, Pastor Trevor. Thank you, Pastor Trevor. Well, good morning, guys. How's everybody? Every week I try to figure this out, like where we should start the chairs, and every week it's tough. Um, hey, it's good to see Deanne here. She has surgery on the foot. Where are you? Hi, Deanne. I know you're, yeah, good to see you here with the foot. Man, it's really good to see DJ Michelle today. Uh, man, miss you guys, love you. Uh, DJ lost his mom this week, and, uh, and she was an amazing lady. I will say that. She was a great lady, and we're praying for you guys. We just really are. Um, so, God's good. That's all I can say is God's good. And, um, and we look at God's word in times like this. Before we start, though, I just want to pray one more time. I feel like we should. Uh, if, you're, if you're there by DJ or Michelle right there, um, put a hand on the shoulder. And uh, we're just going to pray. Uh, Father, we thank you. Thank you for Deanne. I thank you, God, she's here. I, I pray especially for DJ and Michelle and the family. Pray for Jim today. Uh, God, that you continue to comfort. Lord, we know that Phyllis is with you. Uh, we know, God, that uh, there's joy there. And uh, she's just celebrating. And we thank you for that knowledge. And, but we just pray for comfort today, Lord. And uh, bless them. And uh, Lord, I pray bless this time as we look to your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, I, I can tell you I'm thankful for air conditioning today. <laughs> How many like walk here today saying, brace yourself? This is going to be really tough, but I love Jesus. So I'm going to do this. How many had that talk? Because I did all morning long. I'm like, come on. I'm not soft. I'm not soft. You know, I, as I'm loading the truck to come here this morning, I'm like, oh, I got this. And I walk in air conditioning, I'm like, all right, all right. <laughs> this is easier. <laughs> Man, because it was suffering. Uh, Y'all, if you were here last week, you suffered for Jesus. I was starting to feel lightheaded. I'm like, I got to quit. Because <laughs> one of us is going to go down. And uh, so uh, God's good. So today we're talking about uh, who do you perform for? Because... Uh, in a sense, in life, uh, there was a book that uh, Christ found in a thousand. What's the name of that book? Christ plays in a thousand places. Plays in a thousand places. And, and the premise is this, that Eugene Peterson was talking about how we're all on this stage. I, I want to take that imagery today and say, today you're on a stage and you're performing the role of a lifetime. And who you perform for matters big time. How many have ever gone to uh, watch a little kid do a recital or a play or it's Christmas time and you had uh, a loved one in that and you watch them? The most priceless thing, my best time was when Lauren was a little girl, she had to pee up there. And she's doing the whole time like a fan doing this pee dance. That was priceless. But uh, one of the things I really enjoy about that kind of a thing is when when a little kid, they stand on the stage and it's like all that matters in their life is mom and dad. And they zero in on mom and dad and they're only singing to them. How many have watched that precious thing happen? I mean, honestly, it's priceless. Even if it's not your kid and you see them zoning in on a couple you know and you see their kid just focused on them, it just warms the heart. You're like, man, that is the most priceless picture, picture maybe in the world. Uh, there's nothing like watching that kind of thing go down. Uh, unfortunately, kids grow up. Uh, right now we have our high school, junior high students. They spent all night, all day yesterday playing games, all night doing everything junior high kids do. Raise your hands, make a noise. What, what? Thank you guys. I told them the first one I find sleeping, I'm stopping and coming back. Be fun, we'll cut. They're like, ooh, no. Anyway, um, so when they get a little older, and how many have seen like fifth or sixth grader, seventh grader have to do one of those plays, and they're like, they don't want to do it. Why? Because they're not aware of mom and dad anymore. They're not performing for mom and dad. Now they begin to perform for someone else. Maybe they're, they realize their friends are there, so they're like, it's on their face. They're not looking at it. They look like death on a stick. They don't want to be there, um, and it makes a difference. 
Uh, they're performing to a different crowd. How many of you have ever found the kid that realized they're good and they're there for them? <laughs> they're performing for them and they're like, oh, yeah, here I am. And we've seen that kid, but nothing ever tops that kid that stands on the stage and performs for a mother or a father. Matthew chapter 6 uh, we're going to look at this, and we, we keep coming back to this theme to the core because we want to be people of substance. In a culture that's hollowed out of substance, God's called us to be substantive people. We want to have an impact. You get an impact by having a weighty life. This is one of these big issues. If we get this issue today, it can transform your life from humdrum to anything and everything could be an act of worship and could be powerful and good, uh, literally. So Jesus addresses this in chapter 6, and we're going to look at verse 1 to start with, and he says, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. That's a mouthful. And this is, it's an introduction, and he, he uses three things to illustrate this. He uses giving, he uses prayer, and he uses fasting. But he's saying, beware of practicing your righteous deeds before people to be seen by them. So, number one, I want to say this, practice righteousness. He didn't say not practice righteousness. He said be righteous. Uh, his specific examples, giving. We should all be givers. Uh, we should be generous people. Uh, we should be people of prayer. And we should be people that have discipline and fast and uh, not go for instant self-gratification all the time. So we should practice righteousness. Um, he's not saying don't practice righteousness. He's saying be righteous, do the right things. But he's saying, and he's not saying don't do them in front of people. How many of you know that, uh, do we have baskets set up for giving today? They're on the back table. I was going to say, we are. You can't find where we are. You can't find where to get so all this stuff, you know. Um, but say you gave today and there's a back table there somewhere with a brown basket. And you said, I have tied and offer or that great thing, that great thing. That's where you put money. And you have offering today, and you said, you know, I'm going to tithe to my church, or I want to give to missions, or I want to do something like that. Uh, and, and when church is over, you kind of go over and you put that in the, it's discreet, but you put it in the little metal thing, and it's locked. And then the office would unlock it, deposit it, and all that stuff. Nobody talks about what you gave. But someone would still see you practice that act of righteousness, right? I could be like, oh, look, Missy gave. All of us can see that. So uh, how many know today we sing worship songs? You know, we did that together. And you know, how many know that we're going to pray together? Prayer meetings are a good thing. All through the Bible, Jesus prayed with his disciples. Uh, the early church prayed together all the time. Uh, we're encouraged to pray for one another. So it's not that you don't do it before many. Even. How many know if you fast, you're going to be around somebody? And they may know you're fasting when you say, no, I'm not eating today, uh, you know. So Jesus isn't saying don't do it in front of others. He's saying don't do it to be seen by them. Don't do it for the sake of being seen by people. I'm not going to get into uh, all the other texts as examples. We'll take those on their own. But one of them was people would sound a trumpet like, look, I'm giving. Da, 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 you know, and that sounds wild, but literally that's what the Pharisees were doing. They would blow a trumpet like, hold on, I'm about to give some money. You need to pay attention to me and watch. Or people that would pray like, I'm going to pray loudly. I'm going to pray with big, big words so everybody can hear what a great prayer. No. That's what the Pharisees were doing. Our fasting, the example Jesus gave, they'd be like, oh, I'm so hungry. <laughs> I'm so miserable. Well, what's wrong with you? Oh, I've just been fasting for two hours. <laughs> That's what I had to say in my case. It's been a whole two hours getting wrong. So Jesus said, don't do that kind of stuff to get attention from people. He says, because you do, if you do, 
you just got your reward. That's what you just worked for. That, that's what just happened. You just got everything you're going to get out of that. Now, that could be pretty short-lived. How many know that I'd rather store up treasures in heaven, I'd rather give and, and give it unto the Lord so that he, he says that the Father who sees what's done in secret rewards, some versions say, rewards openly. Our rewards big. So I would rather not cash in rewards for that. So there's this thing of rewards. I want to talk about that. If we perform for the right person, which is our Father in heaven, he says there are rewards to this. There's benefit to it. If we don't do it for him, it's gone. It's short-circuited. You're not going to get much out of it. So I want to bring up a few examples. Abraham. Abraham in the Old Testament in uh, Genesis chapter 15. God shows up to Abraham and here's what God says. He says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. Other versions say, I am your shield and your very great reward. God's saying like, ta-da, I'm your prize. It's kind of cool. Now to the one that's not in love with Jesus, that's like, wait a second, I want a bag of money. And God's saying, no, no, forget the bag of money. I'm the prize. Jesus tells the parable of the kingdom of God of the guy that uh, went by a field that had a great treasure in it and he went and sold everything he had. He bought the field and he, he rejoiced because he goes, grab this treasure. And he says, that's what the kingdom is. That, that's what it's about. And the reward is God himself. The reward is having Jesus. And we know that Abraham chose right uh, because later on in Genesis 22, um, we have this scene where God says, Abraham's getting his reward, he thought. He has a son. His name's Isaac. Could you imagine how spoiled this kid would have been? Dad's 100, mom's 99. This kid comes along. How many know helicopter parents to the max? Isaac, where are you? What are you doing? They had to be freaked out about his safety. And God comes along and says, hey, I want you to go to this mountain I will show you. And offer your son as a sacrifice to me. Abraham goes. He takes Isaac. Isaac doesn't know what's happening. Genesis 22. He gathers. He has his son carrying wood in the fire. Isaac's carrying the stuff for his own sacrifice. Which is kind of an analogy of Jesus carrying the wood. And he gets to this place that God showed him. And he lays his son on this altar. And he is and Isaac's like, hey, what are we going to sacrifice, Dad? <laughs> What's going on? Maybe he thought, you know, Dad already started the hunter when he's born. He's lost his mind. I don't know, but Isaac lays down here and and he says, God will provide the sacrifice. And, and he takes his knife and he's about to kill his son. And the New Testament says, reasoning that God would bring him back from the dead. Reasoning that I can obey God because he's going to work this out. And he's about to obey God and take his son's life. And then God stops him. So, whoa, 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 whoa. Chill out. And he provided a sacrifice. And then God said this to Abraham in Genesis 22. He says, by myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son. I will surely bless you and I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gates of his enemies. So here because Abraham was saying, no, I'm going to obey God. I mean, my, my whole treasure, the biggest thing in my life is my son. My hope, my retirement, my everything was wrapped up in him. And he said, God, I obey you. I trust you more. God says, you know what? I'm going to bless you because I know you love me more. What was he saying? I know you're performing your righteous acts for me. I know you're performing. I know you're on the stage that I put you on and you're doing it for me. And God says, I'll reward you not a little. I'll reward you greatly. Your descendants will be more than the stars in the sky and the sands in the seashore. Why? Because I think God the Father sitting in that audience when his kid stands on the stage and says, Dad, I'm performing for nobody but you here. 
It's proper. It's beautiful. It looks right. We see Moses. Moses comes along and God's about to take Israel into the promised land. God's saying, hey, just, just go. You know, Israel was rebelling and, and being awful and and in, in Exodus 33, here's Moses' response to God. He says, and he said to him, if your presence will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. And the Lord said to Moses, this very thing that you have spoken, I will do. For you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Wow. Moses is referred to as a friend of God. One that spoke to him face to face. And right after this, God shows him his glory. Moses is like the only guy that's ever seen the glory of God on earth like that. And it's because Moses says, listen, yeah, you're saying we'll be blessed. But I'm not going without you, Father. I'm not going without you. If you're not with me, if your presence isn't with me, keep it. You can give me all of the nations. You can give me everything. If you don't go, I don't want to go. I don't want to be there. And what does God say? He blesses Moses. He says, I know you by name. And Moses was privileged to see God's glory. How cool is that? Again, you see Moses, it's his time to shine. He's on the stage. And he could have said, well, I just got to make an end to this. I got to retire, you know. I got to make it through this. And he could have done a million different things. But he says, you know what? God, if you're not in it, I don't want any part of it. I'm not budging without you. And bless the heart of God. Look at David. King David, the man after God's own heart. And we see in Samuel chapter 2, verse 6 through 16. It says, as the ark of the Lord came into the city, David, uh, city of David, Micah, the daughter of Saul, looked out on the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. So the ark, the presence of the Lord is brought back to Jerusalem. And King David, the, the mighty warrior, the guy that people said, Saul has slain his thousands, but David did tens of thousands. And, and he was this war hero and great king. And the Bible says as the ark is coming, David in front of the ark takes off his royal robes and he's linen, in a linen ephod, basically his underwear, guys. And he begins to dance wildly before the Lord and celebrate and worship in front of all the servants and his uppity daughter, his uppity wife, I should say, um, despised him for this because he did that. And in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 22, David says, I'll become yet even more undignified than this. You've not seen anything yet. The underwear dance was nothing. <laughs> Why? Because David wasn't there dancing for her. He wasn't there dancing for himself. He was there dancing for the one he loved. I love in Psalms uh, 27, David prays this prayer. And you see this heart. He says, one thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. David says, you know what? This is the one thing I want. I can gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. Even through his failings, God was able to bring a man like that on. Why? Because when he's on stage, he's like, hey, Father, where are you in the crowd? Because I want to perform for you. It's so important that we get this. Um, Paul, you move into the Old Testament. Uh, Paul, who went through everything, uh, he says, I want to know him in the power of his suffering and in his resurrection. That's the one thing he wanted. He said, I'm forgetting whatever's behind me. I'm straight in towards Christ. He wanted to know Jesus. So guys, there's so much to be had. What is the difference between, how does this apply to our lives? Let, let's go there. When Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 1, be careful, be cautious, be wary of performing your righteous deeds before men to be seen by them. Because if you do, you'll have no reward from your father. His rewards are over. What, what you get is what you get. How do we act this out? Um, there was, 
a really cool little book by a guy named Brother Lawrence called Practicing the Presence of God. How many have ever read it and seen it? Great book. If you ever get it, you'll uh, go try to find it on Amazon or get on Google or whatever. Practicing the Presence of God. Write it down. It'll take you an hour to read it, if that. And Brother Lawrence was a, a guy that simply wanted to experience God's presence. And he realized that it was much of his attitude that if he would pause and recognize the presence of God, uh, it would make everything else really good. And he, he was assigned the lowly job of washing dishes at the monastery. And in that lowly job, he realized the presence of God as he said, I'm doing these dishes for my father. I'm doing this menial task for the one who loves me. And as he would do it, he'd experience such joy and such overwhelming contentment that he didn't want to leave dishwashing. It's interesting, many of us have dishwashing tasks in our lives. Take dishwashing off of it, make it your job. Make it a task you hate to do at home. Make it pretty much anything. And if you're able to get to that place where you're like, I'm doing this unto the Lord. Jesus gave three examples. It doesn't stop with three. He gave giving. He gave prayer. He gave fasting. It could be anything. Uh, I'll never forget years and years ago when I was first doing ministry. Um, I became a youth pastor while I was working full time at A.G. Edwards in their telecommunications department. I was an Army Reservist. Uh, I was on the deacon board at the church. It's just the young guy. I was like 20. They put me on the deacon board. Who does that? Um, I was teaching Sunday school, did the youth group, a thing called Rural Rangers. I was gone every night because I was going to win the, win the world, right, single-handedly. I would tell Cindy, like, Cindy, I got to go do this. I, I, was, I was a terrible husband at the time because I was neglecting Cindy completely. Had no balance in my life whatsoever. Uh, but I was hard charging, man. I, I was going for it. And still, some of it was really good. It really was. We we're doing inner city ministry and burning on all ends, all ends imaginable. Basically, until I burned myself nearly to a nervous breakdown. Um, but uh, in the middle of going for it, uh, I remember coming in on a Saturday to get, get some more stuff ready for the next youth outreach or whatever we were doing. I was by myself, and it rains a lot in Illinois, and I was walking through the fellowship hall of this church, and it was a leaky building, and one of these tiles, if you've ever seen these things get wet, they get soggy and mushy and nasty, and it just got so wet, the water logged, it just fell onto the carpet, and it was everywhere, nasty, ceiling tile mess right there in the middle of the floor. I remember looking at this tile and I thought to myself, I thought, you know what? Somebody else here needs to clean this. I have worked my booty off. I, I am tired. I don't have time for sleep. I don't see my family. I've got my wife stressed out. I've got everybody in my life on edge. And somebody else in this doggone church can come along and pick this mess up. That's, that was in my heart. And I walked by that mess. And I felt the Lord whisper in my heart and tell me, you do it. I was like, okay. <laughs> okay, Jesus. It's something when the Lord tells you it's different. And I grabbed a trash can. I got on my hands and knees and I was picking this sloppy mess. By the way, by telling the story, I'm, I've lost all my reward, but it's worth it. <laughs> so I'm picking this mess off of this floor and put it in the trash can, and I began to just cry tears of joy. I was overwhelmed by uh, God in that moment because I knew that I knew that I was doing it 100% for him. There are no eyes on me that could say, hey, good talk, Trev. Nobody could, none of the kids could say, uh, man, it's great hanging out with you, Trev, today. You know, thanks for being there. Uh, nobody could say a word because nobody knew. It was just me, Jesus, and that mess. And every time I put more of that mess in the can, I just felt so grateful. What was the difference? 
The difference is I, I knew that I knew that I knew in that stupid mess I was performing for him. I didn't know for sure if I was performing for him when I spoke. I didn't know for sure if I was performing for him in other things. But I knew when I was cleaning up that slop, it was nothing but love for God. Can I challenge you that wherever you are, like I prayed about this morning, like God, let this just be you, me loving you. Let me be the chubby kid on the stage. And I pray that for every one of you. God, tomorrow or this afternoon, whatever you're doing, be that kid that looks for the Father and says, God, this is a menial task. I'm doing this one unto you. Someone might have told you, you're doing this. This is your thing. But, but in your heart of hearts, give it as an offering to God and say, God, this one's for you. This is unto you. I'm loving you with this. And watch what will change in your heart. It's transformational. And you'll find there's opportunity all the time. Uh, little things. Serving your family. Picking up the chairs and putting them back up when we're done. Um, but do it under the Lord. Do it for Him. It makes such, such a difference. Now, guys... This stuff can always be felt. Like when a group of people, uh, I'm gonna digress a little bit. You go to Ephesians chapter five, and this is the big marriage chapter. And it begins with these great words. It says, husbands, wives, submit to one another as unto the Lord. Man, when you go loving your wife is unto the Lord or if you're a wife here, loving your husband is unto the Lord or loving your kids is unto the Lord. Man, it makes a difference. It is powerful. Um, whatever it is, do it as unto the Lord. When a church does that, like I said, it's always felt. Do you realize in this room, like if we, if we said today, there are people right now working in early childhood. Thank them for that. It's under the Lord. Powerful. Uh, these guys have stayed up all night with young people. Guys, make it under the Lord. Young people have stayed all night with Johnny. Got to make that under Jesus, guys, or you'll be bitter. Okay? Um, but it's a powerful, powerful thing. So we're going to pray. And, and how many here would say there's a task in your life right now that grind at you? They're like the dishwashing thing. Probably more than that, if we're honest. I'll, you know, I've got a couple grinders, but I don't want to lose my reward. <laughs> I already gave one away today. I don't want to give any more away. But I made a commitment this week. God, that's to you now. When I do this particular task in my life, it is a worship service. Just you and me, see. Just us, God. And I'm looking at you on the stage. And so far, the last few weeks, this little task has gone on. It's been a joy. It wasn't, but it is now. So whatever that is for you, got it locked in your head? Everybody, grab it. Get it. When you get it in your head, say, okay, Lord, this thing in my life is unto you now. And it's a secret thing between you and me that I'm going to love you in. And watch you experience the joy of the Holy Spirit. You know, as Christians, we're designed to be filled with God's presence, filled with the Holy Spirit. And these are just on-ramps for that. When you're like, Lord, I'm doing this just for you. I'm on the stage and I'm just singing to you. Watch the joy. Watch the presence. Watch what happens in your life. It's substance. It's big. Guys, young people, guys, dudes, everybody, awake. every one of you are awake. That amazes me. God's good. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you, God, for your presence. I thank you, Lord, that you put us all on the stage you want us to be in. Some of them seem grand. Some of them seem tough. Some of them seem inconvenient right now. But, Lord, we just pray that we begin to sing to you. Not for others, not for ourselves, but sing to you, perform for you, God. Lord, I pray that the reward you'll bring to them would 
would be way beyond money, God. We don't ask for anything that little. We ask for you. We ask like Abraham and Moses, Lord, be our very great reward. I pray, Lord, that those that are struggling right now with a difficult situation, that we go from a struggle to go to a worship service. God, that would be a source of joy. Help us, Lord, because uh, we know that, that you reward those who perform for you. Uh, we love you, Lord. We thank you, God. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, a couple things before we roll out of here. Number one, air conditioning's great. Yay, yeah, God. Thank you, folks in our free and school district, if you catch this. Um, but other things, we haven't heard anything new on properties or building this week. Um, so we're still waiting. We're praying. And we know that God will direct where God guides, he provides. How many believe that? And I would no more want to force us into a thing than I'd want to perform on the stage for someone else. Uh, we want what God wants. We want God's thing. Uh, Randy is going to be preaching the end of this month because uh, he's going to Winslow to work in First Nations Church. Uh, so we're excited for Pastor Randy. That's cool. Um, so... Uh, Dave will talk a little bit and some others. So we'll have uh, a little group thing going here. Um, you'll, you'll thank God for people that can sing if, if I ever have to lead you in a worship song. Here, let's just do one now. Stand. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> like, is this happening? Is this really happening? Right now, kids are back to like, get your cameras out. We're going to make fun of Trev forever. So, uh, but God's good. God's faithful. Um, Will you stand with me? I want to say one more word of prayer, and we will bolt out of here into a million degree heat. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you, God, for your presence. Thank you, God, that uh, that we can practice your presence, like Brother Lawrence did, that in any situation, let us perform for you. Uh, Lord, let us find us doing that. Lord, I pray you would bless everyone in Jesus' name. Everyone said? Amen. God bless you guys.